What's up guys, if you're going camping or you're looking for the proper rooftop tent because you're tired of sleeping on the ground after all your overlanding adventures, I think I got the tent for you. All right, so the tent on the top of my Bronco Sport is a Yakima HD two-person tent. Now before you go out and buy this tent, it's important to note that you're gonna need the Yakima, the Yakima HD crossbars that go on top of the Bronco Sport so you can put the tent on top of that. Now, I'm gonna level with you guys here. I've never actually opened up this tent, so you're about to watch me for the first time open this thing up and sort of lay it all out. But it can't be all that bad, it can't be too hard. Look at this beautiful view I've got. So, let's get started. Right, here we go. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so that's how you do that. Cool. There you go, buddy. You know what? Let's just look at the instructions. There's a 13 mil wrench and 13, 15 mil wrench. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what it's for. <laughs> All right, but I do know what these are for, so let's... Uh, Go so put these where they belong. Why is my tripod triggered? <laughs> All right, guys. So I was able to get uh, Casa Bronco Sport up after some trial and tribulation, and it only took me about 20 to 30 minutes. And it would be a lot easier if you had two people, but it's not absolutely necessary. So enough about that. Let's go in there and check it out. I need my camera. All right, first and foremost, when you do set up your Casa Bronco Sport or your Yakima 10, I'm just calling it Casa Bronco Sport, you wanna make sure you're on level ground, all right? Cause I'm not really on too much of level ground and that's where I was kind of fighting the ladder uh, just to make sure that the base that you're gonna lay on is level and your ladder doesn't slide underneath you or anything crazy like that. Cause the last thing you wanna do is tumble down this ladder and lose teeth on your beautiful camping trip. So uh, I got mine at about 90 degrees. I just felt that it was sturdier that way. But the instructions do say anywhere between 75 and 90 degrees, you should be safe. All right, something else to note are these metal bars that put up the rain fly and give it all that tension. Uh, so there are actual cutouts around the base of the Yakima tent. I was folding the little skirt up that covers the aluminum uh, base of it, but there's actual little pockets where you could slide the metal rods in. So it gives it a nice clean, finished look. Wow, it is windy. But I'll tell you what, even with all this wind, I mean, you might be able to see the camera shake. Uh, pretty sturdy, not going anywhere. Not gonna end up in the Wizard of Oz or anything anytime soon. So all right guys, welcome to my version of MTV Cribs meets Pit My Ride, because if you go over landing or camping, your crib is also part of your ride. So I'm here inside the Yakima tent right now, and this mattress is so comfortable. I even got a little pillow because I might need to catch a break here soon. Something that I really like about the tent as well is that the side windows open up and all the windows have a mesh netting so you can let that breeze come through and keep all the bugs and critters out. So that's really nice. One thing you might think of is like, what if it's raining, that water can get through the netting, but the rain fly comes out pretty far from each window and it has a, a down slope. So I can't really see any water really getting in unless it's like a torrential downpour and the rain is coming in sideways. But other than that, I feel like this is a really good design. The inside storage space, there are some nettings and some pockets where you can put some small stuff like a cell phone, uh, but nothing too big. Maybe you can hang up your shoes, but I'm leaving my shoes outside because I don't want my house to stink. And after a day of hiking, you guys know it can get pretty gnarly, or if you're overlanding for like three or five days, you need a shower. We don't want that funk in here. Now I know when you're gonna go overlanding or camping, you're not always gonna get crazy views like these, but let me show you what I'm looking at out of my window.
Go! And now, a word from our sponsors. We don't have any sponsors, but I know you thought I was gonna say Yakima, didn't you? <laughs> Dude, there are some of the biggest <laughs> birds out here flying so close to me right now. I'm not food, I promise. All right, guys, one thing I want to talk about is that the, uh, since the tent does sit on top of your Bronco Sport or your Bronco, uh, one thing to note is that that could also be where you decide to store your luggage space. So that might be a downfall for you and you might want to revert back to camping on the ground. But that's one thing to note is that if you do use this tent, that's going to take up that top uh, storage space off of your vehicle. But you still have plenty of room in the back as well. In our situation, we can't really put anything else on top of the Bronco Sport. So that's just kind of one thing to uh, think about on your camping trip and all the gear that you want to bring with you. All right, guys, as much as I would really love to keep talking about this awesome tent on top of the Bronco Sport, I think I'm actually going to enjoy it for a little bit. So make sure if you guys like these videos to leave a comment below, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, or check out one of these two videos. Until next time, guys, peace out. Beautiful, what park am I at? <laughs> Pace Bend Park. Doing bird calls out here. And I don't know if it's because I'm making this video and they can hear me talking. <laughs>